In this video, we're going to fully test and break down the OPS Guardian 6000, a solar generator that delivers true 240 volt output and a massive battery capacity at a price point well below the competition. But is it any good? When I do product reviews, I ask myself several questions. What problems does the product solve? For units like this, they offer a backup power source at a time when the US grid is facing many challenges. The next question is, does it actually do what the manufacturer says it can do? In this case, yes, but I found some issues that we'll discuss in this video. And lastly, would I recommend this product to my community? It definitely addresses a problem of how you can power your home if the grid were to go down with the renewable backup power source at a low price, but you'll understand why the price is so low based on the test results. Stick around to the end and I'll give you my honest take on this. All right, so let's run through the details of this product. And if any time during the video you wanna check out the unit that we're covering, I'll post links in the description and comment section below. So let's jump in. If you're new to this channel, my name is Chris and on this channel we discuss emergency preparedness, AKA prepping. I've covered solar generators on this channel for years as they offer a reliable power source when paired with solar panels during grid outages. And if you can budget your power usage, you can effectively power essentials for as long as you need. Whereas with traditional gas generators, you're limited by your fuel source on hand. Now, I have not reviewed OPS on this channel before, and I'll just be upfront with you. When I see units at this price point with the capabilities that they advertise, I always wonder how are they selling it at such a low price point? At the time of recording this video, this unit, the actual unit down here, is selling for $1,699. Now, I realize that's not pocket change and a lot of my viewers are on a tight budget, but for those that have money set aside for a unit like this, namely a system that can output 240 volts, that price is extremely low. The next closest comparable unit on the market is about $1,000 more expensive. So let's kick things off with the specs, then we'll go through the test results, and finally I'll wrap up by answering the question, who is this for, and I'll give you my final thoughts. Overview and key specs. The OPS Guardian 6000 is an expandable plug and play home backup power station that delivers whole home capability without the high insulation costs, permitting requirements, or complexities of systems like the Tesla Powerwall or Generac standby generators. It outputs 6,000 watts continuous with a 9,000 watt surge, provides two 120 volt plus 240 volt split phase from a single unit, allowing it to run major household loads such as refrigerators, mini split heating and cooling units, and even ovens. It's also movable with a handle and wheels to transport it around. Now the system uses lithium iron phosphate batteries rated for 3,500 charge cycles. It can be expanded from 4.6 kilowatt hours to 4.1 kilowatt hours using the OPS G5 battery modules, providing you enough power for roughly a day to a week of backup power depending on your usage. It also qualifies for the 30% federal clean energy tax credit through 2025, significantly reducing real world costs. Now, on the charging side, the Guardian accepts both 120 and 240 volt AC, supports hybrid AC plus solar charging, and advertises up to 2100 watts of solar input. Now, in real world testing, we were unable to reach the full 2100 watts claimed, as we'll discuss in the testing section. For outputs, the unit provides a full suite of home ready ports, including NEMA 620R, TT30R, L1430R, 1450R. The bottom line is that the Guardian 6000 delivers whole home grade 240 volt output, large expandable storage, and versatile charging options at one of the lowest cost per kilowatt hour levels in this category, making it an attractive option for both emergency backup and daily power savings. Test. So we ran various tests, and this part is important. I'm going to share what we tested, how we tested, and the results that we actually got. I left the AC inverter on with no loads and measured the watt hours used over 24 hours. Now, why does a test like this matter? AC idle consumption is the power the inverter draws when at rest with no load, which can drain batteries during prolonged outages. All of these units, they have a certain amount of idle AC consumption, but how did this unit compare to the others on the market? Here's what we found. We let it sit for 24 hours with the AC inverter on, and during that time, the battery dropped to 64% from 100%, meaning it used 1,656 watts over 24 hours, which comes out to 69 watts per hour. Now, comparable units on the market have a similar AC idle consumption, so it performed within a similar range. One side note, in the app, you can control how long the AC stays on with the setting. So if you're worried about draining the battery while not in use, you can actually adjust how long the AC stays on. For this next test, I applied a load of approximately 3,600 watts of the AC output for one hour. 
We use these watt meters as shown here to record the actual AC output. And we compared that value against how much the battery was actually used. And by doing this, we can test the inverter's efficiency. And units like this typically operate between 80 to 90% efficiency. So using the kilowatt meters, we measured 3.86 kilowatt hours of usable energy before the battery hit 0% from 100. Since the battery's rated capacity is 4.6 kilowatt hours, that works out to about 84% efficiency, which is typical for inverter losses and right in line with what we see from other similar units. On the front of the unit are AC output plugs designed for EPS usage. You're probably familiar with UPS, which must switch over in under 12 milliseconds. Some manufacturers offer EPS, or emergency power supply. For a system to qualify for EPS, it plugged into an AC source. It can provide pass-through power to devices plugged into the unit's front. If we remove the AC source from the wall socket powering this unit, as shown here, it can switch over in under 20 milliseconds. Now, most computers like the one we're powering here would either shut off, flicker, or crash if this unit were not truly in EPS. And as you can see, the PC still operates when we pull the AC source from the OPS unit. So, it passed a test for this. For this next test, we plugged in the 240 volt connection into our transfer switch, which powers the house. And we can power as many items and appliances as long as we don't go over 6,000 watts of output. Now, a quick note about 120 versus 240 volts. If you can only provide 120 volt to your home's panel, you'll only be able to power one side, what's called leg A. I've even got an open panel here I can show you so you can see what I mean. A standard 240 volt panel has two legs, A and B. This OPS can power both sides of your panel, which means that you can technically power everything in your house, though not all at once. For this test, I powered all of the items at the same time, pushing the unit to the 6,000 watt AC output. I was powering a mini split heating cooling unit, a refrigerator, a microwave, a computer, a coffee maker, lights, and an electric stove. I was able to power up to 6,000 watts of devices around the house and the unit handled the load. Now for this next test, here's where we ran into a problem. The unit advertises 2,100 watts of solar input capabilities but the MPPT on this model accepts only 18 to 140 volts. Now, since most standard rooftop solar panels exceed that voltage when connected in series, you're really limited to approximately three full-size 400 watt panels. That translates to roughly 1,000 to 1,200 watts of real world input under normal conditions. And with my three 400 watt panels, I was realistically seeing around 1,000 watts at peak, far below the unit's advertised solar ceiling. Now, I suppose there may be some low voltage portable panels on the market that in theory could, if strung together in series, reach 2100 watts, but on my research, I couldn't find anything practical or widely available at higher wattages that could let you come close to the full 2100 watts. Not even the solar panels they sell on their website when combined in series will achieve these numbers. This is ultimately due to the system's MPPT behavior. The maximum input voltage is capped at 140 volts, which is on the low side for a six kilowatt system. Now, most 400 watt residential panels have a VOC of 37 to 50 volts, meaning that you can only string three in series. That limits your realistic solar input to roughly 1,000 to 1,200 watts, well below the advertised maximum. In terms of solar performance, the Guardian 6000 falls into the poor category. The unit simply can't take advantage of its full 2,100 watt solar spec in any practical real world setup using standard panels. It works but it falls short of what you would expect from a system of this size and the solar input ultimately limits performance. For AC charging, I did not run into really any surprises and that's a good thing. The Guardian 6000 features a switch between the AC input, allowing you to toggle between fast charge up to 1800 watts and custom charge, which lets you adjust the AC charging rate in the app. This is a genuinely helpful feature. For example, if you're charging from a smaller gas generator that can only output 1500 watts, you can dial the charge rate down below that limit in the app. If you set the AC charge rate higher than what the gas generator can supply, you'll overload it. So having the ability to fine tune that setting is a really useful feature. Now on the solar side, we already covered the limitations in the previous test. However, it's worth noting that the Guardian 6000 can charge from both AC and solar sources simultaneously. So if you're running solar plus wall power or solar plus a generator, you can stack both inputs to recharge faster and keep the system topped off. Speaking of generators, we tried powering this unit with a regular generator, but it wouldn't accept a charge. But when we powered it with a gas generator with an inverter, it charged it no problem. This is expected behavior. As many sensitive electronics, they do not accept AC power from gas generators unless they have an inverter. And we'll discuss that a little more. 
Overall, the AC charging and combined charging behave exactly as expected with no issues during testing. Regarding the app features, it has the standard features that you would expect in a system like this. You can control AC input speed, remotely turn AC and DC on or off, monitor solar input and battery status, and so much more that units like this can do. But what's unique about this unit is its ability to schedule tasks. It allows various tasks to be performed, but I can see this feature coming in handy in a real world scenario for power arbitrage. I live in California and rates go up significantly during peak hours from four to nine. They're incentivizing people to provide backup batteries during peak hours and offering lower rates for those that do. So with a system like this, I can connect it to the grid during regular hours and provide pass through power to the devices I wanna power. Then I can schedule the unit to stop pulling AC power from the grid during peak hours and instead use the battery, thus reducing my need to draw power from the grid when rates are almost three times higher. So for those looking to save money, a system like this definitely has an ROI, saving you money and paying for itself over time. Who is this for? Final thoughts. The Guardian 6000 is built for homeowners who want practical, affordable, whole home backup power without the cost or permitting requirements of traditional systems. Its ability to deliver true 240 volt from a single unit, expand up to 41 kilowatt hours and qualify for the 30% federal tax credit, it makes it one of the most compelling options in this price class. That said, it's not a right fit for everyone. If you're a full-time off-grid homeowner with a large rooftop solar array that requires a high voltage MPPT window, this system's solar limitations will hold you back. For real-world emergency backup, my ideal setup would be the Guardian 6000 paired with around 1200 watts of used, rigid solar panels wired in series and a small inverter generator capable of more than 1800 watts, something like you could pick up like the Westinghouse 2500 watt from Home Depot. That combination, it gives you dependable solar during the day, generator support when sunlight drops, and still keeps the cost below the base price of the next comparable 240 volt solar generator system. If your goal is to save money through power arbitrage, the Guardian makes this easy. Just schedule charging during off-peak hours and run household loads during peak rates. I know several friends and neighbors who are already doing this to cut their monthly bills. After testing nearly every major solar generator on the market over the last several years, the standout strength of the Guardian 6000 is simple. It's affordability. Aside from the solar input limitations, it's a practical option for three key use cases reducing electricity costs through arbitrage, serving as a dependable UPS with a large battery reserve, and providing whole home backup power during grid failures, including support for larger appliances. And given the low price point of the main unit, pairing it with an expensive rigid panel setup and a budget inverter generator, it creates a capable and cost-effective backup solution without the financial commitment that's really required by the other systems that you typically will see for this class. Now, as I mentioned at the start of the video, the price point of this unit genuinely surprised me. Apart from the solar configuration issue, it's a solid performer at a very accessible cost. If you want to check out the Ops Guardian 6000 or see its current pricing, there's a link in the description section below. It helps support the channel and as always, only buy something if it makes sense for your situation. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment below and as always, stay safe out there.